Hi, so I'm Nigel Griffiths, I work in IBM Power Systems in Europe on AX and Linux. This is a personal project of mine, best if you contact me with nigelargriffiths.hotmail.com. At the bottom right there you can see the URL where you can find out all the in data and uh, downloads. Now in this one we're looking at more advanced techniques with the graphs. So what happens when we want to create a graph that has multiple resources? So things like CPUs have lots of cores, we have lots of disks, lots of networks, um, file systems, a whole bunch of things like this, isn't there? Each different server has a different number of these resources. And so if we use a template, it can't work out how to do that. Well, we can, and there's a very clever way of doing that with Grafana, and InfluxDB actually helps out, and we'll cover that in this movie. If we look at the JSON output of N jmon we'll see that we have that the name of the particular area of stats and then we have inside these brackets we have the individual stats that's pretty clear now if we go to the data which includes the individual cpu so the cpu physical in here and we can see we have another level in here so we have the cpu name in here the cpu name in here and here and then the stats uh, below that so this means that these are the names of these variable resources there could be different numbers of calls in here same with uh, disks and networks and those sorts of things Let's continue on that theme then. We have the physical CPUs and the individual cores in the data structure. These individual things in here are referred to as the uh, CPU names and they're used as tags. As the injector pushes the data into the InfluxDB, it pulls out these names and adds it to a tag for this particular item in here, the, the measurement as it's called, the uh, physical CPU in this particular case. Now inside uh, Grafana we can pull out these things if we get, use the CPU physical uh, minus name this is the tag that we use then they actually give us a list of these. Now we already have a set of tags so for example we have the host of course for a particular file there's only one host and one architecture. And then in IBM speak we have these uh, machine type model names um, OS are fairly obvious the operating system AIX or, or Linux and things and we actually pick up the serial number that can be useful because we can find out all the operating systems that are on a particular serial number of a machine and then we find all the virtual machines on that particular server. So we're going to use these features of these tags that the injector uh, puts in. So we go back to Grafana, we've got a, a simple model in here and we're going to create a, a new graph. So I'm up here, add a panel. Let's uh, tell it up front is going to be a graph and in here we're going to do a couple of things. First of all we're going to select the uh, data source as normal. Um, in here we have a, a where and host and a tag and we're going to pick up the uh, variable that's um, change up in here. That was done in the uh, previous movie. We're now going to go in here and pick up the, these are the totals. Remember they just have four values in here. The CPU, physical and logical have all the cores in there as well. Then in here perhaps we're going to pick up the value of a user. Um, we don't want um, to do these uh, means in here so we're going to click on this one and remove it. Then we're going to use the group by to pick up all the cores inside this thing called the, the CPU physical. And so we're going to delete these two things in here and we're going to put in this thing in here. Remember the tags? We're going to pick up the f f CPU physical but with the, the extra tag which is the name of the cores in this case. We'll put that in there and in here you see it's used uh, these horrible looking things in here which aren't particularly uh, neat but we can um, make that simpler. So it's sort of a bit of a magic cookie in here. You have to look in the question mark here to uh, find the details of this and it took me a little while to do that so we're going to put in as two square brackets tag underscore cpu physical name two brackets to close it and um, if I go somewhere there we are it's done it just worked it out and so it's picked up all the other cpu names up in here so we'll come out of this and now we have a graph that is actually pulling out all the individual CPUs. 
If I drill into these last two days, I should remove the historic data. OK, that looks better. We're taking out the old uh, naming convention. We still need to change these uh, CPU numbers to three digits with zeros in the front so they come out in the right order. Perhaps I'll sneak that into the next version of NJMON. Again, we want to change the uh, title up in here. And um, maybe we actually want to sort of drill in to see more of that data. Um, this means now if I go from this machine that has 16 CPUs, this is just a wild guess now. If I go to another machine that has, yep, less CPUs, it's worked that out and produced less uh, graph uh, lines in our data in here. Um, let's try again to Silver 4. Is that going to work? Yep, we're down to even fewer CPUs. This is AX6, so it only uses uh, SMT4. It can't go to SMT8, so it looks like less um, CPUs. These are the logical CPUs, of course. Now let's just do one more thing in here. Um, in this case, we've just picked up the user, um, but of course there's system idle and wait. And um, then there's sort of another one, which is like not actually running the um, LPAR or virtual machine. Now if we click this button here, we looked very briefly at it before. This is the sort of the, the simple way of doing things with a little um, areas. This is the syntax, if you like, the query that it's actually throwing into the InfluxDB to actually get the data. Now in this case, I actually want the user, but I also want um, the other ones in here. So we can go in here and put plus equals sys and plus, um, double quotes, I should have said, um, what is it, wait, and plus equals idle. And, and we can put other things in here, um, you're doing some of some things and um, lots of other features can go in here. Now if I click this button again, it'll go back to the simple panel way of doing it, but it, it can't cope with this. So um, don't do that. But now instead of just displaying the user time in here, it's going to do the user says wait and idle time in here. So we'll come back out and the, the graphs will have leapt up a bit while they've rescaled on here, so you can't really see that. But we can actually see now that the... Um, well, this is interesting, and like we can see sometimes that when we only got a few threads running, we're using less uh, the you know, the uh, calls. And some periods we've got enough to keep all the calls busy, so they're all about 25%, and splitting the work across them. The same can be done for disks and networks and file systems. They're the obvious ones. There's probably a few more that I've forgotten about. Oh, paging spaces and um, memory block sizes. They, the memory blocks in AI it's come in lots of different sizes. Um, and so we could draw graphs that uh, pick up all the sizes and show them in one go. Need to change the title. But that's it. We're showing the main principles there of these variable resources and how to work them. The, the, the trick is the, the tags are doing the hard work, and we put that into version 30 of the NJMON project. So that's it. It's quite simple for handling the variable resources, and um, we're using tags to do the, the hard work for us. Uh, next time is a surprise topic, mostly because I haven't decided what it's about yet. Don't forget, give us a thumbs up if you like this, and uh, we'll go off and do some more movies. And if you subscribe, then you'll be told when more movies appear.